Good morning, gentlemen. Many people have asked me, our friend, tell us what's happening on the Ukraine front. Is there going to be World War Three? Is Ukraine going to have a peace deal with Russia? Will Ukraine cede its territory to Russia? Will Russia win? Or will the Ukraine counteroffensive succeed? What is the opinion of the NATO allies who are fighting along with Zelensky? Well, there are a lot of questions. So let's try to answer something. Now, first of all, the war has gone on for a year and a half. That's a fact. But after a year and a half, one thing is which coming emerging is that Ukraine is getting tired. And the Western allies who are propping up Ukraine are even more tired because they are feeling the pinch of the war. And I think all the statesmen there very well know the miscalculations that took place just before World War II commenced. And they don't want a repetition of that. Hence, there are many restrictions on Ukraine on the weapons which they are giving. That is the point which must be noted. It's not a wholehearted support because if they were to do that, it would trigger World War III. So the NATO allies don't want it. At the same time, they don't want a Russian victory because that will be detrimental to NATO, bring down their morale, and they won't know what to do. So it's a choice for NATO between the devil and the deep sea. That is the point. Gentlemen, the war is on for a year and a half, and I think one can safely say now that the Ukraine offensive, the so-called summer offensive, has failed. And i like to quote the chief of staff of the American Armed Forces, he has just made a statement that the results are not commensurate with the efforts put in. And in fact, the Western allies are a little exasperated that the offensive launched by Ukraine has failed. So there's a blame, gone on, blame game on between Ukraine and the Western allies, NATO, America, etc. on one side. And now there are certain other feelers which have come in and Ukraine is not happy with them. One of the feelers which has come in is that Ukraine must think of stopping the war by agreeing to cede some territory to Russia. That means Russia would keep all the territories which they have occupied in eastern Ukraine and Ukraine have to start life afresh. Obviously, the, Russian, the Ukrainian president could not accept this and he has rejected the proposal. Gentlemen, the proposal is there all the same. And that is one way of ending the war. Whether the Russians will agree or no is a second point. They tried to have a conference in Jeddah, the Western part, got about 30 countries there for a confabulation to end the war. But without Russia, that conference had no relevance and it collapsed like it was supposed to. So what is happening further in the war front, first of all? In the war front, the Russians are on a firm footing. They're using excellent latest precession guided missiles and weapons, which are hitting Ukraine very hard. And Americans are trying to do a little bravado act, you know. And one of the bravado acts is they said, we'll give you F-16 to Ukraine. See, a weapon per se by itself doesn't win a war. It is the men who pilot it. You will, gentlemen, will recollect that in both the 65 and 71 war with Pakistan, the Americans had given America, Pakistan a lot of sophisticated weaponry and fighters. In fact, in the 65 war, they had the F-104 star fighter to fight for the PAF. But then they lost. The Pakistanis lost despite all the superior weaponry because there was no proper training and the men didn't have the motivation to fight. Now, talking of giving some F-16 to Ukraine is again like, you know, holding a lollipop before somebody and say, oh, come, we're going to give you this. But if you examine the deal in detail, it will involve, first of all, training the Ukrainian pilots on the F-16, 
and as far as I understand, no training program so far has been worked out. That means, if at all something happens, it will be in 24. And till that time, this promise of F-16 is a dud. It has got no meaning really. That is number one. They have given some defensive missile like the HIMARS attack to Ukraine, but they haven't been successful. And they have been hit by precession guided uh, munitions from Russia. And the Ukrainians have suffered heavily. Recently, the Russian, the Ukrainian president had to carry out a reshuffle of his top military brass because of the complete failure of the top echelons of the Ukrainian leadership. Now, what is happening is Ukraine is requesting that please train our officers. See, it's okay to talk like this, but the fact remains that NATO has bitten off more than it can chew. And as I've pointed out in my earlier videos, one shouldn't forget that Napoleon reached Moscow, captured it and still lost. Hitler was 30 miles from Moscow, still lost. I don't think history, anybody has been able to defeat the Russians in Russia. And there is little chance that they'll be able to do it now because the Russians have all along considered, at least under Vladimir Putin, that Ukraine is part of Russia. And very rightly so, because Ukraine was a socialist republic, part of the USSR, for many decades. Now, the Americans didn't want uh, this to continue, so that is why they broke up the Soviet Union. And now they had a plan, a devious one, to break Russia into another few states, but they haven't failed, succeeded, they have failed. That is what has happened now. So, gentlemen, the war, as far as Ukraine is concerned, is at a very interesting stage because finally I have a feeling that the Russians are getting into the act. They are moving very fast now and inflicting tremendous damage on both the infrastructure, the cities, and the casualties on the Ukrainian side are high and the morale is becoming lower and lower. So, giving F-16s is like to bolster the morale, but they're going to help. It's not going to have any meaning as such. And the Ukrainian offensive sadly failed. It had to fail because there was no motivation, no direction, and the Russians had steeled their defenses. As far as Russia is concerned, I'm a little surprised that they haven't been able to overrun Ukraine. With such a massive army, it is not a very good sign that the Russian army couldn't penetrate deep into Ukraine. By now, if uh, somebody else had been in charge of the Russian army, I'm sure uh, the Russian army should have captured Odisha and the Kiev and Kharkiv, and they should have been reaching right up to the Dnieper River, and they should have gone westwards. But they've been just fighting on the edge of Ukraine, the eastern Ukraine, holding on to the territory tenaciously, all right. But victory is not there. So when you say you win a war, you win a war when the other army surrenders. So Ukraine has not surrendered. So they're still fighting on, despite all the odds stacked against them. But the Russians have not won. Now that is a mystery which military historian will have to analyze. Is it due to the lack of motivation in the Russian army or the lack of leadership, generalship, it could be anything. Because when you make a plan, you have to win a plan to win. You don't win a plan to prolong, keep fighting for one and a half, two years and then achieve some territory which you are taking 20-25%. That's got no relevance in modern military terminology. So I would say, if you take it from that angle, the Russians have not won and the Ukrainians are at hard pressed, but they haven't lost. So where is the way forward? There is only one way the stalemate can be broken and that, I'm afraid, is what the West is scared about. This stalemate, why the West is wanting a ceasefire and negotiation with Russia is because this stalemate could lead to something very disastrous, a nuclear explosion in Ukraine and then Ukraine is part of Europe. And if there's an explosion in Ukraine, it's going to affect all the countries there, Poland and all these countries, you know, which have been chirping around like 
बर्ड जिनोवा अगेंस्ट रशिया आई इट्स वेरी सीरियस सिचुएशन एंड प्रॉब्ली जो बाइडन हैज रियलाइज्ड इट एंड दैट्स व्हाई ही हैज वीटोड एनी अटेम्प्ट टू इनकॉर्पोरेट यूक्रेन एज पार्ट ऑफ नेटो दैट्स दैट्स अ पॉइंट व्हिच इज वेरी वेरी रेलेवेंट सो जेंटलमैन द वॉर इज ऑन and as i said it's at a critical stage russians are in the ascendant but they haven't won and the west is scared that the war may prolong and lead to armageddon that is the point because in my opinion if the west doesn't throw in the towel now they will sign their own doom there's no doubt about that let's be very clear Russia will survive the onslaught but countries which are trying to catch the Russian bear by the claws are going to be wiped out Poland Belgium Denmark look at Denmark giving agreeing to give F16s to Ukraine what is Denmark nothing it's a non entity as far as the world is concerned and two new thermonuclear bombs on Denmark and cease to exist so Biden is a man who has realized this and he is trying his level best just to prolong the war so that the Russians can agree for a ceasefire or they declare a unilateral ceasefire or something like that like the Chinese did in 1962 while fighting India otherwise it's going to be very very dangerous for the west it could lead to the last war the war between good and evil we don't know who's good and who's bad whoever wins is good and whoever loses is going to be bad but it will be the destruction of western civilization i couldn't understand how foolish the west has been in trying to back ukraine and trying to entice the russian bear sometimes i feel that the old saying you know that the men or rather the gods when they want to destroy somebody they make those people mad I think the western leadership became mad that's the only thing I can think of I hope they recover their equanimity and some sort of agreement can be hammered out otherwise if the war prolongs conflicts goes on it's going to be caput for western civilization I close now gentlemen and I'll say subscribe to my channel share to the friends and come back for more God bless. Bye bye.